Okay. Week one of the college football season is finally here. I know. Crazy, right? Crazy stuff we got going on here. Um, after the appetizer that was week zero, we're getting it in. We're getting it in for week number one. And I got to tell you, there's a lot of stuff going on in week number one. Um, we start on Thursday. We end on Monday night. And it's going to be beautiful stuff all around. Um, let's start with the first big game of the season. Um, this is one of my top six games of the week. I usually I did a top six games of the week last year. Let's do a top six games of the week this season. And the first of these top six this year belongs to West Virginia Pitt. The first time in over a decade the backyard brawl has been renewed and the number 17 Pitt Panthers take on the West Virginia Mountaineers as Keaton Slovis will be taking the field at quarterback for Pitt and JT Daniels will be on the other side with Graham Harrell yes that Graham Harrell as the OC for the Mountaineers um, this, this one again I don't have a lot of thoughts on these two teams right now um, you know a lot of people expect Pitt you know now without Kenny Pickett to not be the same team as they were last year. West Virginia is kind of in a weird situation, you know, themselves. You know, they got to improve this year mightily in order to, you know, finally get some traction to the Big 12. And Pitt, you know, looking to defend their ACC title they won last season. Uh, this, this is going to be a hard-hitting, brutal game. Again, we know Pitt doesn't have Jordan Addison. More on him later. Um... Uh, but this, this one's going to be fun. This one's going to be fun. Uh, it, it's more of, you know, who's going to step up, you know, on the, both sides of the ball for these two teams than anything else. And this is a big one. This is a big game, you know. Central Michigan, Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State is number 12 in the country. Uh, I don't really have a lot to say on Central Michigan. i got to say Mike Gundy, Spencer Sanders, they got to get the ball going. You know, really quick, a lot of people are, you know, picking Oklahoma State. You know, there's some people that are picking Oklahoma State to win the Big 12 this year. And a lot, of, some people are pretty high on them this year. So we'll see what they can do. Some people are picking Central Michigan to pull off the upset. I don't really see it. And I cannot remember who won the MAC last year. Who won the MAC last year? I don't know, and I don't care. <laughs> um. V of I is taking on Wake Forest. There's really nothing for me to say here. Sam Hartman's out, unfortunately. Uh, but you got Christian Beal Smith, Jaquari Roberson. Uh, those two guys should be able to take care of business while Wake Forest. Um, I have no idea who the quarterback is going to be for Wake Forest. And I don't really care about this game because, again, VMI is not particularly a good FCS team to be facing. So this is not really a huge test at all for Wake Forest. The other important game on Thursday night, however, is Penn State, Purdue, Sean Clifford, the Lions. They are looking to have as good of a start as possible, you know. With Aiden O'Connell back, you know, for the Boilermakers, he's still going to be throwing the ball around, I bet. Uh, but no David Bell. Uh, a lot of those long wide receivers left for the Boilermakers as well. So you know, Purdue is looking for. They're looking for something, and you know, again, I do think the Big Ten West will be a bloodbath this year. So, you know, if Purdue gets this win, like some people are thinking, um, this could be big. This could be big for them. Penn State cannot disappoint this year. So, some people are a little bit higher on Penn State than others. They got to win this game in order to get the momentum started in Big Ten play and in, you know, the CFP race in general because again the CFP race is gonna be crucial this year I really think so uh, you know I already said you know back a couple weeks ago that I don't think there's going to be you know I don't think there's gonna be any question who the top three teams are it's just gonna be who's gonna be number four at this point who is going to be number four so Penn State is in the running for number four along with the rest of the top 25 and several other teams you know that aren't ranked in the mix for that number four spot so we'll see what they can do the alone Friday game is West Western Michigan and Michigan State uh, Mel Tucker and the Spartans 
They're looking to take care of business with Peyton Thorne at quarterback. Uh, you got Jared Broussard at running back now. No Kenneth Walker anymore. Um, Jared Broussard, a lot of people are pretty high on him, and hopefully he improves throughout the season. Peyton Thorne as well. Hopefully these two improve throughout the season. Hopefully Michigan State can actually find a defense this year. Should be an interesting test against Western Michigan. Um, you know, a lot of, I think West. I think Michigan State is pretty favored heavily in this game, so not too much to say here. Um, the early slate Saturday really isn't that much to look at. You know, um, I'm going to be watching other things early on Saturday. I'm going to be watching the PLL playoffs. Going to be watching WWE Clash the Castle early on Saturday. So my Saturday morning gets booked, and luckily. There's nothing here really in these early 11 o'clock games that really stand out to me. Um, you got Sam Houston, Texas A&M. Sam Houston is only playing nine games this year, and they're trying to find a solid footing to get started, you know, with their FCS to FBS transition, you know, as they move up to Conference USA next season. And, you know, Texas A&M with Haynes King being the starter now. He beat out Max Johnson after a long QB battle. You got Walter Nolan on defense uh, as well. He's looking to be on the hunt. And, you know, Sam Houston, I don't really know what to expect from them. They're not going to the playoffs this year. They, they had a dismal end by getting blown out by Montana State last year. In the FCS, what the FCS quarterfinals, or was the FCS? I think it was the quarterfinals that they got blown out in last year by uh, Montana State. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so a bad end for Sam Houston's FCS tenure, but they were a recent national champion. They have more scholarships, so they can contend. I, I know, I know somebody did a video the uh, the like another a, a day or two ago. Um, and I don't know why this person said um, that Sam Houston would only score two points against Sex A&M. That's probably not going to happen. Sam Houston can be a little bit more competitive than that. This is a Texas school after all. But um, Texas A&M still should get the job done against the transitioning Bearcats. Colorado State, Michigan. I have really no idea what Jim Harbaugh is thinking here. J.J. McCarthy, Kate, and Akmanera, you know, they're split in time. McNamara will get the start this week. McCarthy will get the start against Hawaii next week. So we'll talk about you know how bad Hawaii is next week uh, and everything like that. There's they got to get this QB situation under control really quickly. Two quarterbacks is never a recipe for success. And also watch out for Will Johnson, a cornerback for the Wolverines as well. He should be having a good day against the Rams, of Colorado State, and in NC State ECU. Uh, people are pretty high on NC State. Devin Leary's back. The Wolfpacker back. They can't overlook the Pirates, though. Um, if I do watch a game early in this window, in this 11 a.m., 12 noon window on the East Coast, it will be this one. Um, thank you. The Wolfpack are only favored by, what, 10 points? So, um, this, this could be interesting. I don't have anything on ECU uh, right now. Uh, but what I will say is that North Carolina State, they got to start off right. Um, their showdown against Clemson in a month or two, you know, in a month from now, is going to be real key to the ACC. Here we go with the big ones. When you get to that 3.30 Eastern, 2.30 slate, you got two big ones in this window. Oregon, Georgia, number 11, Oregon, number 3, Georgia, Noah Sewell, He's out there for the Ducks with Dan Lanning coming on over to Oregon. And Bo Nix, yes, that Bo Nix at quarterback. What can this Oregon team do against the heavily favored defending national champions, Kirby Smart, Stetson Bennett, that defense, the defending champs, they're looking for, I mean, Georgia's looking to strike while the iron's hot. And again, Georgia... Heavily favored to go back to the college football playoff, you know, and Oregon, can they do this again? Can they make a big time upset like they did last year? Bo Nix has given Georgia fits at times, not every time, but he's given Georgia some fits. You know, the 
you know, the games between him and the Georgia defense have been interesting to say the least. You know, Bo Nix might be one of the most up and down quarterbacks I've ever seen in my entire life, but I mean, hey, it is what it is. If Georgia's defense gets gets out there and does what they need to do, it's going to be over real soon. You know, when it be doing like that, I'm going to have to switch over to this next game, Cincinnati, Arkansas. And this one is big. This one is another big one early in the season. Cincinnati, some people are putting favoring them to be the G5 representative once again. While Arkansas has a lot of expectations to put upon them. You know, KJ Jefferson, you know, he's he's back. And he is a big dude. A big dude at quarterback. The momentum for the Hogs and Sam Pittman is high. After last season, after what they did last year, Cincinnati again. The big question for them is can they be a top team in the group of five again this year? Can they go back to the playoffs? They they got to they are too have a QB problem. Ben Bryant, Evan Prater, um, they 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 got to do something. But there's a lot of running backs for Cincinnati though. They got like four of them, you know, and you know teams with a lot of running backs can do some damage. So we'll see what the Hogs and the Bearcats could do in the, in the third biggest game of the weekend. UTEP, Oklahoma, really have nothing to say here. Dylan Gabriel is at quarterback. Brett Benables making his head coaching debut. Oklahoma is a team that not a lot of people are high on. A lot of people think that the Big 12 will eliminate itself from the playoff race early this year with you know how balanced the conference might be um, and we'll talk about teams like Texas and Baylor and you know more about Oklahoma State as the weeks go on and stuff like that but for now UTEP you know they easily got dispatched by North Texas Oklahoma should be able to take your business there Miami, number 16 Miami, taking on Bethune-Cookman. Bethune-Cookman has a lot of transfers, but that's not going to matter here. It's Mario Cristobal, Tyler Van Dyke, and the Hurricanes, you know, are looking to run the table. Some people are very, 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 very high on Miami. I'm not one of those people. I do think, you know, that that Miami has a chance to get to see if people, they gotta overcome the rest of the ACC to get there. Though they gotta overcome the rest of the ACC, and I just don't know if they can do that. Um, you know, I don't think, I don't think, you know, I don't think, you know, that Miami, you know, is gonna be like, you know, like this eleven and one team this year. I think they they gotta take this one week at a time. You know, they gotta figure out things on both sides of the ball one week at a time. You know, they have the talent there. This is this is a Miami team with talent. But they just got to figure out what they can do with that talent. And, you know, opening up against the black school ain't going to really, you know, do nothing for you. It's not going to do anything for you. The team that people are high on, though, as far as the group of five goes, is Houston. The Cougars have a lot of hype, you know, going into the season. You know, Clayton Toon, he should be back. Um... Again, Houston's kind of a you know a weird spot because again I don't really know anything about this Houston team right now, but I do know that Clayton Toon should be back if I'm not mistaken. The Roadrunners have Frank Harris running it back for them, and we know how good UTSA was last season until they got beat by North Texas Mean Green in a game that I watched you know fully and wholeheartedly last season. Um, so this one's gonna be really intriguing. Um, if Georgia, Oregon, or Cincinnati, Arkansas ain't your cup of tea, get to this game. Troy taking on the number 21 Ole Miss Rebels. Lane Kiffin has Jackson Dart now instead of Matt Corral. And can the Rebels have a good season? I don't think they're going to have as good a season as they did last year with Matt Corral. Uh, I still think they're going to be very, very highly you know, touted, but I just don't think you know, again, the SEC West is going to be a gauntlet to go through. And, you know, that's just including Alabama probably going undefeated. You know, like, it's it's going to be rough every single week. So this should be a good start for Tro- for Ole Miss. Uh, for Troy, can't really say anything there. 
BYU take it on USF again. How did the Bulls land Gary Bohannon? He transferred over from Baylor. I don't know how the Bulls got him, but um, we'll talk about Baylor in a moment here. Jaron Hall, the Cougars, they got a lot of guys back, so BYU can run, you know, can run some pockets this year. This could be a top 10 team at the end of the season. I really think that, hell, if they can get past Notre Dame, if they can get past Arkansas, if they can get past Baylor, um, we'll be talking about BYU extensively like we did the last two seasons here, I, I imagine. I imagine we'll be talking about BYU a lot here on this channel and how their progression will be, you know, as the season progresses. I think this BYU team can be a top 10 team, probably a top 5 team, you know, if they can, you know, get past the hurdles. But they got to get past the hurdles first. USF, this this ain't going to be an easy opener. This is the same Gary Bohannon that helped lead the Baylor Bears to the Big 12 championship last year. Rice. Take it on USC. Oh my goodness. Come on now. Come on now. This is Lincoln Riley's debut at USC. This is a USC team that has a lot of hype. I am not one of those people that buys into USC despite the fact that they have Caleb Williams, despite the fact that they have Mario Wood, you know, you know, despite the fact that they have Jordan Addison, you know, a lot of guys from Oklahoma came with Lincoln Lottery. This should be an easy game because it's Rice. Come on now, it's Rice. But the Pac-12, it's going to be hard to navigate. And you already know what I think about the Pac-12. I don't think there's going to be a Pac-12 playoff team yet again this year. I really don't. Um... You know, I, I just don't. I just don't see it. Now, there is potential there for a Pac-12 team to get the playoff, and we'll talk about that team in, actually just after I get done talking about this game. But Pac-12 is going to be hard to navigate with Oregon, and this other team that we're going to talk about now is Utah. Utah, 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 number seven in the country, taking on Florida. You know, Billy Napier... And the, and the Florida Gators, they're looking to get the season started off right. I have no idea who the quarterback's going to be. Um, I believe it should be, what, Anthony Richardson um, for Florida? I have no idea. I really don't know. Um, but Florida, you know, has a lot of running backs, though. And that could mean something, you know, that could help the Gators, you know, when it comes to the passing game, you know, as far as that goes. But you've got Utah here with Cam Rising, Tavion Thomas, and a linebacker by the name of Lander Barton. You should keep that name in your mouths this year, just like you should keep Noah Sewell's name in your mouth this year. Um, you know, this Utah team has a lot of hype. A lot of people are projecting them to go to the playoffs. I don't think that's going to happen. I do think the Pac-12 will trip them up. I don't know if it's going to be this game against Florida. Because again, Florida, you know, it's kind of in a weird situation, you know, with the tr coaching transition and everything like that. So, you know, f the real question is, is what in the world, what in the world can Billy Napier bring to the table? Because, I mean, that offense at Louisiana was potent, you know, at times. I mean, hell, he kept my Texas Longhorns at edge, you know, for quite some time, you know, in that game week one last year. And, you know, Louisiana was winning 10, 11 games every single year. So can Billy Napier bring Florida back to that type of potential of winning 10, 11 games every single year? We will see. We will see. This is a big one. This is my uh, this is my fourth biggest game of the weekend. You know, so Utah, Florida, circle that game as we start the late window, the seven, you know, the seven Eastern, six o'clock window. Albany taking on Baylor. Blake Shapin is back at quarterback for the Baylor Bears. You should take care of business against Albany. Should be easy to take care of unless something stupid happens again. And again, Baylor is number 10 in the country. A lot of people are high on Baylor. And uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what they can do. Illinois State is not a good team in the, in the Missouri Valley. They weren't last year. So Braylon Allen and the Wisconsin Badgers should be take care of business here um, the quarterback situation for Wisconsin is going to be something you know we'll see what they could do because I have no idea who in the world's quarterback is going to be I 
I genuinely forgot to look that up. Miami of Ohio taking on Kentucky. Kentucky is number 20 in the country. Kentucky has a lot of hype around them as well. And I don't think they're going to. I do think Kentucky will be good. I think this might be a nine win team this year, but I don't think they're going to get past Georgia. You know, Will Levis, Chris Rodriguez, they have a lot of hype behind them. You know, and I think Kentucky can still, you know, do a lot of damage. We'll be talking a lot more about Kentucky, you know, next week. Um, considering week two is going to have, you know, a, a, a big game for them. Can they take care of business against Miami of Ohio? Probably. But the hype around Kentucky, that's the biggest takeaway for me. And I think, you know, Kentucky, you know, can win a lot of games this year. They might be able to beat Georgia, but that's a very, very small mite. We're talking a very, very small mite, and that's going to be like a late in the season and everything like that. So we'll see, you know, if the preseason projections on Kentucky are right. I don't think they're going to be right, but we'll see. Utah State taking on Alabama. Logan Bonner, the Aggies, they go into Bryant Denny Stadium against the Crimson Tide. Bryce Young, reigning Heisman Trophy winner. Will Anderson. You know, a, you know, a huge, huge playmaker on defense. And you got Jameer Gibbs, who's they're probably going to take care of business. Alabama's probably going to take care of business and you know, move on to Texas real quick. But Nick Saban, you know, he's obsessed with perfection. And this Alabama team, again, again, I think they're going undefeated. They're going to the playoffs. They might lose a game, but I think you know, they're going undefeated and going to the playoffs. I don't think they're going to be number one, though. I wouldn't have them at number one. You know, personally, I'd have Ohio State number one, Bama two, Georgia three. But it is what it is. And speaking of Ohio State, this is my fifth biggest game of the weekend. That is the Notre Dame-Ohio State game. A top five matchup between these two teams. Tyler Buchner, Marcus Freeman at head coach, the Irish. They're heading in to Columbus, Ohio to take on C.J. Stroud, the favorite to win the Heisman this year. Jackson Smith and Jeeba and Travion Henderson and an elite Buckeyes offense, an elite Buckeyes defense. You know, this game is huge. A lot of people are not picking Notre Dame to win this game at all. And I am inclined to agree with you. I don't think Notre Dame is going to win this game, guys. Um... I don't think it's going to be, you know, like a 11, like a 17 point, you know, game. I think this will be like maybe like a little bit closer than that. And I could be completely wrong on that. I do think Ohio State is going to go undefeated this year, you know, as well, along with Georgia and Alabama. I do think these three teams are going to be undefeated, and it's just going to be hard to, you know, rank who's going to be one, who's going to be two, and who's going to be three. <clears throat> but personally, again, I think I'd have Ohio State number one, Bama two, Georgia three. That's just how I see it, and I mean, you know, I you know I was critical of Stroud last year because he really relied on the talent around him, but he doesn't have as much talent around him. It's still, you know, and I probably said that wrong. I I meant to say he has even probably even more talent around him now, you know. But I, I do think this guy can win the Heisman this year. I know the Heisman is a QB centric award. And everything like that pretty much nowadays, but it is what it is. I think C.J. Stroud and company should be able to beat Notre Dame, but I don't think it's going to be a blowout. So, you know, it is what it is. The final game I have circled as important, you know, as in my game of the week. This is the game of the week right here for me, personally. Um, you know, Ohio State, Notre Dame is great. You know, Utah, Florida is great. The backyard brawl, Georgia, Oregon, and Cincinnati, Arkansas is great and all that. But my sixth and final game of this week that you need to be taking your eyes on, you need to be watching out for, that would be Jackson State and Florida A&M. <laughs> yes. Yes, I said it. Jackson State, Florida A&M, the Orange Blossom Classic. Big game. This, is a good, this might decide the Swag East right here like it did last year. You know, you got Deion Sanders. You got Jackson, Mississippi with all, you know, there's turmoil surrounding, you know, that city with the water situations right now. Florida A&M, they're having a beef, you know. I, a lot of people thought it was, you know, 
you know, something was happening with the players, you know, but it turns out administration behind Florida A&M kind of messed things up, and the players were not having none of that, and they were sending letters, they, 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 they called out the administration's hypocrisy on some things, and I mean, Florida A&M and Jackson State, this is a big game. This could decide who's going to the Celebration Bowl. We had 20 players were ineligible for Florida A&M last week. And I believe one of them was Isaiah Land as well, if I'm not mistaken, which is very surprising to me. Um, but, you know, this is a big, big game right here. You know, and you got Musa as well. You know, Musa for Florida A&M. Uh, I forgot his actual name. But I know it, it's uh, something Musa. Um, watch out for him. Uh, I'll, I'll get his name right eventually. Hold on. Give me a second. Yeah, it's Jeremy Musa. My bad. My my apologies. Um, that's a damn good quarterback right there. He he. he I mean, man's helped Florida A&M, you know, out last week against UNC, and they kept they kept they they kept the Tar Heels on their toes for a little while, you know. So we'll see what they could do, you know, the Rattlers out here against Jackson State. That's Shadur Sanders. You got Aubrey Miller Jr. back, and you know this man right here, Travis Hunter. What in the world is he going to do? Because remember. Jackson State stole this man away, you know, and I mean, they got a huge, huge get with Travis Hunter. So we'll see what the two-way guy can do against this Florida A&M defense, which is a really good defense. Again, they really kept North Carolina on their toes last week. So we'll see if this game can decide the Swack East. If it does not decide the Swack East and Alabama State, you know, gets in there, you know, it's likely going to be one of those three teams taking on either Southern or Grampley State SWAC championship, in my personal opinion. Um, you know, Eddie Robinson Jr., I didn't really talk about Eddie Robinson Jr. last week, um, but I will now. Great first win for him. And, you know, for the Hornets, they're watching this game with intensity. A lot of teams in the SWAC are watching this game with intensity. The MEAC is watching this game with intensity. So, this one's big. If you're looking for something to do on Sunday, watch this game. The other game that is important on Sunday, it'll be the later game on Sunday. That is Florida State and LSU. Jordan Travis, the running backs for Florida State, they go up against the debuting Brian Kelly and the LSU Tigers. I have no idea who the quarterback is going to be. Is it going to be Jade Daniels, the ASU transfer? Is it going to be Garrett Neusmeyer? I have no idea. Again, this is another team with a quarterback situation that needs to be solved very, very quickly. Um, if Florida State can win this game, this is going to be big for them. If LSU wins this game, it's going to be big for them as well. You know, I don't think I do these two teams are really going to be competing all that well this year. Um, you know, I know a lot of people are a little bit higher on Florida State, but I'm I'm just still kind of skeptical on them. And the LSU, same thing with them. I just I buy Brian Kelly, but at the same time, I I I do not know what in the world LSU is going to do. Can they do some damage against the rest of the SEC West? Who knows. And then finally, Labor Day Monday, it's Clemson, the number four team in the country. Some people are picking them to go to the CFP, which I don't know why you're picking them to go to the CFP. But hey, Ryan Breesey for the, for the Tigers. He's going to be feasting on some yellow jackets on Monday night. Jeff Collins, he, he, it's just going to be a sad time for him. You, you know, it's just going to be tough for George Tech, who probably has the toughest schedule in the country. DJ Uwe Lagalale, he's got to improve this year. That's just my personal opinion. I don't think this Clemson team is really going to the playoffs either. I think this team might have two losses. You know, you know. But I mean, um, who knows what will happen? I just don't buy Clemson at number four right now. To be completely honest with you, but hey, they're number four. They are rated number four for a reason, so it is what it is. So that's that's what I got for week one. Until 
you know, su- until Monday night when the George Tech Clemson game concludes, Big Boy Sports will be seeing you all throughout the rest of the weekend. Enjoy Labor Day weekend as we got a bevy of college football. And I'll see you soon. Big Boy Sports. Say him. Good night. And good afternoon and good morning, whatever you see this, you know. Remember to like, share, comment, subscribe, click the notification bell, and do all the good stuff you need to do. And let's get to 200 as well. See ya.